So I'm delighted to be talking to you today about the future of telecommunications. But in order to talk about the future, first I sort of want to take you back in history. So think back when phones were only available for a very small percentage of the population. In fact, you had to be very wealthy or very powerful, and there's a reason for that. The first phone produced by Motorola in 1983 looked something like this, but probably bigger. It cost $4,000, weighed two pounds, and the battery life was only 60 minutes. Can you imagine? So as the 80s went on, that wonderful you know, decade of greed and consumption, we saw more phones and more hands of people, and it became more a popular culture. So who would have thought, and this will bring back some memories, that Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell used this behemoth phone. And the funny thing was, this is really a foreshadowing of what's happening today where a teenager wouldn't be caught dead without their phone. So eventually, though, people got sick and tired of these big, bulky phones and being so obvious. So in 1996, Motorola came out with this very sleek StarTech phone that weighed 3.1 ounces, and it was the clamshell. And what it proved is that it showed people were not only interested in function, but fashion as well. So then competition picked up. You had the prices coming down. More devices in, came into the marketplace. And from there, styles changed very quickly. You had candy bar phones. You had uh, phones with color screens. You had the ruggedized phones, all shapes and sizes. You had phones that took pictures, and it, be it became more robust. And really, what that does is really brings us to today which all of us can relate to your smartphones, your PDAs. They organize our lives. They allow us to communicate in multiple ways, such as voiced and text and email. They entertain us. They keep us informed. And certainly, they keep us connected. Interestingly enough, more than 85% of Americans own a cell phone today. And as a matter of fact, by 2010, that number is expected to go to 87%. So I think if you took out those that were incarcerated and maybe those under the age of eight, we might be at 100% penetration. <laughs> so the growth really is not going to come from new users. I think really where it's going to come from is data. And people lead very busy lives. They want to be able to check your email. You want access to information. You want to get to the TV. You want to watch the news, but certainly you want to do it today without being tethered to a desk or a chair. So most of the smartphones today and consumer-friendly phones allow you to do that, but there are some glitches. So some, some experiences are suboptimal. In fact, it depends on the network that you're using. Your upload or download speeds can be very slow. Your streaming video, if you've ever watched it, is a little choppy. So what I'm very excited about is that these limitations are about to change thanks to a new technology called WiMAX. Zone. WiMAX from Sprint. I spend most of my life online. There's all these technologies on the table, and they're all moving forward so fast, and they're all so awesome. We're building a network to mobilize the internet so you can get access to the internet everywhere. Zone subscribers will be able to experience a host of rich applications and access from a wide variety of innovative devices. The WiMAX system that we're building with Sprint provides a mobile broadband. It's actually the experience that you have at home with your broadband connection out in the streets, out in your car, out in the world. We plan for you to be able to make an internet session happen anywhere, wherever you are, on any device. I have here a tablet PC with a Motorola WiMAX PC card that's allowing me to connect to the mobile WiMAX network that's surrounding us. It can seamlessly hand off between WiMAX to Wi-Fi to traditional cellular systems. As we drive through the streets of Chicago, our mobile WiMAX sessions are running seamless and uninterrupted. All the services you have at home will automatically run on the WiMAX network. I can see streaming video, catching up on my news, some entertainment. End users will have access to the content that they want, whenever they want, wherever they want it. We're not building another mobile voice network. We're building a network to mobilize the internet. We'll be replicating a DSL-like experience anywhere in the city and the surrounding suburbs. Mobile WiMAX is enabling us to hit the cost curves that are really set by fixed services in DSL and cable access.
Our vision for commercial coverage is really geared to giving everyone the kind of experience that they want. So if you're a consumer, you'll get access to your content wherever you are. If you're a business person, you'll have access to your business applications. Zoom selected WiMAX because the ecosystem was within reach. The technology is at least two years ahead of any competing technology. Zoom has great partners committed to the product. If you look to the future, Zoom's plans for mobile WiMAX is to deploy coverage to all the major cities. Zoom. WiMAX from Sprint. So the addition of WiMAX brings us to an intriguing question. What if an entire city were a hotspot? So think about it. Instead of searching, like the video kind of shows you, for the nearest coffee shop or bookstore, now if you had your device, your mobile broadband device, or your laptop, or even an internet tablet, no matter where you are, sitting on a park bench or driving in a car in a taxi, you could get access to the same broadband speeds that you could if you were sitting at your home or at your desk. And that's what WiMAX brings to the table. So the way you can think about it is think about Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi talks in terms of providing coverage in square feet. WiMAX provides coverage in square miles. The WiMAX network Sprint is helping to build will revolutionize the internet. And then of course, you'll no longer need to be tethered to wires or the ethernet lines to get high quality and and uh, fast web browsing. WiMAX promises to take wireless innovation, faster speeds, and greater mobile internet convenience to an entire city or cities across the country, enabling a whole new range of multimedia devices, applications, and uses for customers. So Sprint's WiMAX network today is also called, called Zone. And some of you may know that we've been in a soft launch here for over a year. Many of you may have tried um, or participated and tested this network in last year's WiMAX World in Chicago. And if you haven't, you'll have the opportunity to do it later on this month when WiMAX World returns. But if you have, then you'll understand why we are so excited about this network. Not only will it change the way we surf the net, it will open up the internet to a whole new world of devices. So let's say, for you folks that live here in Chicago, that you're stuck in traffic. So not a far-fetched scenario, as I have experienced from the airport getting here today. So you have plans to meet friends at a movie that's going to be at 7 o'clock, and you know you're going to be late. So you whip out your WiMAX-enabled device. And again, this is not a cell phone. Don't know what the device could be, but you connect very quickly to the theater site. You look at the times that the movies are showing. You select maybe a later time or even a different movie. You send out a quick um, broadcast to your friends that you're meeting. They confirm back, and you're on your way. And at the same time, you could even be viewing streaming video to see what other movies are up and coming. Now, granted, for us security-conscious folks, you would not be doing that unless the car was completely stopped. <laughs> so imagine, let me give you another scenario. So imagine that you buy this digital camera that has an embedded chip already in it today. And you go to your child's soccer game, and you catch them making this great score. Let's say it's you know, scoring the winning goal. So before you leave the field, literally, you could transmit that image to your friends or family right from that digital camera or that WiMAX embedded device. Or you could send it home to your PC, your desktop, or you could send it to the local drugstore and have that picture printed out by the time you got done with your day. Or let's say, and this is a great scenario, your daughter or your son calls from college, and they need money, and they need it pretty darn fast, as they're prone to do. So you're just sitting down, you're at a business lunch, you're in a meeting, you're thinking, when am I going to have time to transfer the money? Well, with WiMAX, you would take your device, simply transfer the funds from your uh, bank account to theirs, very fast, very simple, and very speedy, and just very calmly. And just it's an easy way to access and do what it is that you need to do. So these examples are not just pipe dreams or not just what ifs. Actually, some of them are already happening today. As a matter of fact, we're officially launching WiMAX in Baltimore this month, and the official launch of the Chicago market, which is the second market, will be sometime in the next, I'd say, two to three months. What's great about WiMAX compared to other 4G networks is that it's here today. WiMAX, and you heard Barry say this in the video, is about two years ahead 
of other 4G technology like LTE, long-term evolution. It's already, being, it's already been tested. It's already being used in 65 countries or six continents, and about 14 or 15 million subscribers are utilizing WiMAX today. Forecasters predict that that number will go to 100 million by the year 2014. The other thing is you might think that being untethered to a desktop raises a lot of um, um, access to viruses or spams or security issues, and that's not true. Actually, WiMAX has more encryption in the interface than, WiMAX, than Wi-Fi does, and that's what's very attractive to our business users. In addition to high speed and mobility, WiMAX will offer a cool geo-browsing, they're calling it, when it launches. So it's very easy to use and access information. Um, so for our older generation that didn't grow up with, let's say, the cell phones and the internet today, it becomes very user friendly for them to access it. So it's things like nav tech traffic, which is pretty self-explanatory, lets you know what's going on with the traffic. Eventful, which again, it lists the events that are around you, wherever city you happen to be in. You've got Topics, which is a local news service, and then another one is called Yelp. I'm not really sure of the name, but it's a restaurant review service. So think of Saget's on steroids, if you will. So what does the future of WiMAX look like? Well, Sprint's partners have agreed to embed millions of devices with these WiMAX chipsets over the next three years. So WiMAX will be in devices that you, you know, it's hard to really think about today that you could access the internet. So you think about things like, you know, the, uh, you think about a broadband card off the bat, you think about a phone, but think about things like an appliance or cars or entertainment devices and cameras. So, so many more devices they'll be embedded in and you'll just go into any type of a store and buy that device. The thing that's different about this technology is you'll, have ha you'll have, definitely have faster speeds, but at a much lower cost, right? Because there's millions of these devices. And then the consumption model is very different. You're not signing up for a two year contract. You could subscribe to the WiMAX uh, network for the day just because you wanna you know, send a picture. So very easy to do, different model, and different way of thinking about things than, than the telecommunications industry is today. And eventually, as we move on, the network will do more than just allow users to connect to the internet. The devices will be able to talk to each other, creating a convergence of a new network that allows customers to communicate in such areas such as healthcare or sports, home entertainment, and more. So something that's very exciting, as most of you know, and I think there, this is on the agenda in a little bit, is Chicago is vying for the 2016 Olympics. And wouldn't we love to see that we were awarded the Olympics? Woohoo! Yes? Yes? All right. But really, what, where this is relevant is, in just a couple of facts, is that NBC, which you know, just broadcast the Summer Olympics from Beijing about a month ago, they had su tremendous success with record number of Americans tuning in to watch the broadcast. But what the most important piece and what's relevant to you is not so much the content that was viewed by you know, regular television, but how many users went online and on mobile, vice, mobile devices to view this content. And in fact, some of the estimates are up to 15 million consumed or watched some of NBC's coverage of the Olympics online. And that included both live content or on-demand videos. And Sprint and other carriers obviously offered the coverage via the on-demand clips and on the, the wireless phones. But what it should make you think about is such the potential of high-speed networks that deliver the content virtually anywhere on any device. And it's true freedom to get what you want in terms of information when you want it, no matter where you are. So beyond the video and the information, for an event the scale and size of an Olympics, there are so many you know, visible and non, not so visible elements that you got to think about to host an event of that size. And I'm talking things like security and tickets and traffic and parking and weather and lodging and food, and the list is just virtually in, endless. And if you stop to think about it today, we can do a lot of that with our mobile phones today. We can check traffic, we can find um, lodging, uh, police and fire use wireless devices today. But with WiMAX, you'll be able to do that much faster. And again, the key point being is it's not just on a wireless device, it's on a multitude of devices. You can even do streaming video and it won't be choppy. It could be on the outside of a bus that may help Chicago win the bid because security is you know, top of mind for any uh, country or city that's gonna host that event. By 2016, it's really hard to predict how we'll be utilizing devices to help manage a behemoth event such as the Olympics, and we realize that. But one thing I do know for sure 
is that it will be enabled by wireless um, networks and WiMAX. So WiMAX is an open technology, which means it's accepted among all electronics and telecommunications industries. And as a result, we have some very high profile customers that have, or companies that have joined Sprint and its commitment to this technology. And you saw some of those up during the video, but among those are Google and Intel and Samsung, Nokia, Motorola, Ericsson, and that list will continue to grow. And we're very proud to have partnered with Clearwire to form this new company. That company is going to be called Clearwire, and it's supposed to close by the end of this year. So what you'll have here is we're launching in Baltimore, then we'll launch in Chicago, and then we're going to launch in cities across the country. And all, as you all know, the Chicago New Media Summit is all about this group's commitment to build the most vibrant, collaborative, and member-centric community of digital media visionaries, creating new markets, jobs, and prosperity. In fact, that's why we've been here the last two days. And every one of us will play a role in making that a reality. But I believe that WiMAX has the, the potential to affect change far beyond what any of us can realize today. And as I've discussed, it will allow us to communicate more effectively, more quickly, and devices that communicate directly from device to device. It's the internet, think about it, it's the broadband connection to the inter internet and it's one giant hotspot. And it will change how we interact personally as well as professionally. It's no mistake that Sprint is beginning this venture by launching here in this great city of Chicago. This city can produce the leading new media community on the planet, and WiMAX will play a central role in helping to bring that to fruition. So as you can see, the fast-moving telecommunications industry shows no sign of slowing down. It started off with just your basic cell phones. It went to the smartphones. We went to 3G, and now we're going on to 4G, so faster technology enabling us to do more. So I'll close with this. Back at the turn of the 21st century, Sprint was the first to provide the internet for wireless phones when we launched what was then called the wireless web. Sprint was the, off, the first to offer a phone with a color screen. We were first to offer picture mail from a phone and really the first to launch a high-speed nationwide cellular network. So we continue that tradition today of being on the leading edge by rolling out a new wireless technology that offers true broadband speeds throughout an entire city and cities across the country. One that rev will revolutionize not only how we do our work, but how we live our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you.